Hello everyone, this is fine from Awesome Beginning Pro. I hope you all are well. Today I'm going to talk about the 65 inch high scene UA10, which is incredible bright picture with a strong contrast, white colors, and it supports 144 hertz native refresh rate with VRR and AMD FreeSync Premium Pro. If you are new in my channel, then please subscribe and press the bell icon for future notifications and upcoming videos. I have another channel named Tech Gaming Villa where I upload similar kind of tech videos like TV comparison, sound system, home theater. You can check and subscribe. This TV supports Apple AirPlay, Google Assistant, Google Cast, but it's black, aren't as deep as they can be on OLED TVs, and game mode can cause clipping in highlights. Hydrates once again hits it out of the park with a premium TV that rivals much more expensive competitors. The Hyphen UA10 series is the company's high end line for 2024, keeping everything that made last year's UHK a success and building on it with an even brighter panel and a sleeker remote. The 65 inch UA10 at least price of $1500 US dollar but is regularly available for an immediate price $1150 US dollar. It's much more affordable than Samsung's Kirin 90 DQ LED which price $2700 US dollar or S95 DO LED which price $3400 US dollar. And while it can't match their inky blacks, it was far brighter than both. The U18 is simply a fantastic value, earning your editor's choice awards for offering flagship picture quality at a mid-range price. The U18 looks like almost any other high-end TV format, the front with no bezel on the sides and top of the screen and a narrow black bezel along the bottom edge that features a textured metallic strip for flare. A small bump below the lower bezel holds the infrared sensor and a far field microphones and on the underside is a small power input button the tv sits on a hexagonal dark gray metal table stand that can be set in two positions on the black of the tv depending on whether you want the screen to sit 2.8 inches above the surface it's on or a few inches higher to accommodate a soundbar as is standard for most tvs the u10 is also wall mountable all of the UA10 sports set for the power cable connector sit on the left side of the back of the screen. It has 4 HDMI ports, 2 4K 144Hz, 1 ER, a USB port, 3.5mm composite video and headphone jacks, and an antenna cable connection, face lift, while another USB port and optical audio output and an Ethernet port face directly back. The power port sits on the right side of the back of the TV. Hyzen gives the UA10's remote a much needed redesign over the one that comes with the UA10 and previous models. Instead of a plain, slightly chunky black wand, the new remote is a sleek silver, still plastic but uh, decently textured. It has a silver rectangle. The circle navigation part is cool and metallic and the buttons all feel just a bit flatter while remaining easy to identify under the pump. The layout has been slightly rearranged with a dedicated service button for Amazon Prime Video, Disney Plus, Netflix, QB and YouTube. And a new custom shortcut button resides above the navigation pad instead of below it. Rollover channel droppers along with playback buttons rest below the navigation pad with power input and menu buttons located near the top. Hydrin uses Google TV for its smart TV platform, which means the UL10 is loaded with features. All major streaming services are available, including Amazon Prime TV, Apple TV, Disney Plus, Max, Netflix, Twitch, and YouTube. Google Cast lets you stream video from your Android device or Chrome tab. And Hydrin adds AirPlay to the mix so you can also stream from your iPhone or iPad. A far field microphone array enables hands free use of Google Assistant, which is useful for searching for content, controlling the TV or any comfortable smartphone devices you might have, and getting general information like weather forecasts and sports scores. The Hyphen UA10 is a 4K QLED TV with a 144Hz refresh rate and support for high dynamic range content in Dolby Vision HD10, HD10 Plus, and Hybrid Log Gamma. It features an ATSC 3.0 tuner for 1080p and 4K over the air broadcast. This TV using 
clean K10 ampere calorimeter, a uh, Muridio 6G signal generator, and portrait distress Kalman software. Uh, Heisen claims the Uitens mini LED backlight system is capable of displaying a record breaking peak brightness of 3000 nits, and it neat indeed comes close to that number in this test. Out of the box in HD theater mode with an HD signal, the TV shows a peak brightness of 920 nits for a full screen white field in which every backlight element is read up as bright as it can go. That's already very bright, but when showing an 18% white field that only lights up part of the screen, that number jumps to a blazing 2755 nits. That's far past the UHK's peak brightness, which has uh, 2114 nits, which was previously the brightest TV I've tested. The Samsung Q90D for comparison only puts out 1253 nits with an 18% white field. Anything around 1000 nits is very bright. And a great deal of HDR content is mastered for 1000 nits, but the ability to get significantly brighter is still excellent. The trade off is that the u doesn't hit the perfect black levels of the Q90D, but it comes close with a very low 0.007 CD per meter square that results in an effective contrast ratio of TLAC 93571 is to 1, which is impressive. It isn't an infinite contrast ratio like you get with the QN90D, which uh, puts out no light at all in black parts of the screen. But the difference is minor as it is. The U810 gets almost as dark and almost twice as bright as Samsung's flagship QLED TV. HDR signals as show plenty of light on the U810. The theater play mode uh, recorded a peak brightness of 678 nits with a full screen white field and 1566 nits with an 18% white field. Most TVs tamp down on brightness with HDR signals considerably, but the U10 barely holds back. Black levels are a bit higher with HDR signals at 0.014 CD per meter square. The U10's color levels with an HDR signal compared with the 709 broadcast standards and with an HDR signal compared with DCP3 digital cinema standards. HDR colors are generally well balanced, true reds are oversaturated, yellows are slightly warm, and whites run a touch pink. HDR colors show more accurate whites and a color range that almost completely covers the DCP3 color space. No Magentas are overly warm. This is close to the color performance we saw on the Hyzen U8K. And it still looks very good even if it's slightly less accurate than the Samsung QN90D. The picture looks lifelike on this U810, especially in sunny daytime scenes in a dark and stormy shorts. The sea of trees against the cloudy sky look fairly dark but retain a strong shadow picture and preserve the green of leaves. Neither the trees nor the black and brown fur of animals get quite as dark as they do on the Samsung S95D OLED. But the Hyzen's much higher light output still translates into fantastic contrast. The party scenes in the Great Gatsby also show impressive contrast, though once again the extreme brightness of the panel stands out more than very dark shadows. The blacks of source and hair still look properly dark and not remotely washed out while retaining plenty of detail against the blazing whites of uh, lights and balloons. They don't reach the inky blackness of an OLED, but they come admirably close considering how much light is being shown in the same frame. Light blue is minimal in most cases, but like all mini LED TVs it is present, it's most visible in high contrast edges between very really bright and dark objects, and you probably won't see it appear outside of those type of shots. Even in the most extreme examples like demonstration footage from the Spears and Mounsil Ultra HD benchmark piece designed specifically to bring it out, I only saw a slight thin haze around well lit flowers and paints against completely black backgrounds. Often again being on the U810 is very good with little to no desaturation, color screen or reduction in uh, dynamic range even if viewed from the far sides. But the U810 lacks the dedicated gaming control panels of 
Samsung TVs, gamers should still be pleased by its performance and feature set. It supports 144 hertz signals and variable refresh rate, including AMD FreeSync Premium Pro. Using an HD Fari debug HDMI matrix to measure latency, the U10 showed an input lag of 7.4 milliseconds in PC or game mode with instant game response enabled. This is below the 10 millisecond threshold which used to uh, consider TV to be good for gaming, though it isn't as low as the Q90D's 2.9 millisecond lag or the S95D sub 1 millisecond lag. Anything under about 16 millisecond is less than one frame uh, of latency and 7.4 millisecond means just one frame at 120 and 144 hertz. So it's still very responsive. Make sure you turn off game mode when not playing games, though uh, because I saw uh, significant clipping in highlights with it turned on. This Hyden U8K is definitely an excellent image quality, bright picture, and great battle. The U10 is even better, it can put out a nearly blindly amount of light. It's loaded with features and it's very affordable for the performance it offers. The Samsung Q90D and S95D airs it out in terms of inky shadows and color accuracy. But they cost two to three times as much, considering the value the U10 presents. So, what's your thought about this TV? Please write in the comments below. That's it from now.